What's up, everybody? Hello, and welcome to Tabletop Tonight. My name is Ruel Gaviola. As always, I'm so happy to be here. I've got a great show tonight. I'm going to be hanging out with Jazz Cruz from the Lobby of Hobbies. He's hanging out in the green room right now, uh, chilling and waiting to come on. We're going to bring him on in just a few minutes. I um, want to remind you that today is Taco Tuesday. So this is a thing uh, we're trying to do um, every Tuesday here on the channel where I bring on uh, different guests and we just hang out and chill and uh, get to know them and then play a game. Um, and um, hopefully I don't embarrass myself in the game because we've got a game that I totally embarrass myself all the time. on. <laughs> it's a uh, Codenames Duet. It's uh, We're going to do the online version. And um, as Michelle can attest to, I'm I'm not that good at this game. So we're going to see how it goes. I want to thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, Slackfish is in the house. The first one in, uh, as always, thank you, Slackfish. Panda Angel is our chat moderator. Please keep things uh, family and, uh, uh, I was going to say family friendly. Um, so, yeah, let, let's keep it family friendly, shall we? Um, I used to say PG-13, but you know what? Um PG thirteen is cool. Family friendly is cool. I, I know we got to drop some uh, drop some bombs every now and then. That that's cool too. Just keep it respectful. Um, a panda says that. Oh, Mrs. Gav is in the uh, chat as well. That's uh, my wife Michelle. She's in the other room in the other office. Uh, Pantry games in the house. Hi, Pantry. Thank you. Thank your themer. Our friends from the future. Thank you, um, Amy and Maggie, for joining us. Much appreciated. Um, I want to get. Right in the business here, folks. Let's let's important stuff, right? Stream snacks. What are y'all eating? What are y'all drinking? Uh, what's happening for stream snacks? Um, I had a delicious, well, delicious dinner of leftovers uh, tonight. Uh, Michelle and I, we had um, some chicken fajitas uh, the other day, and I just polished those off. Had some uh, chips and uh, some ceviche as well. Oh, the ceviche was good. I, was, I haven't had ceviche in a while, so that was delicious. Uh, Panda says that she ate too much for dinner food come one time. Uh oh, don't fall asleep on us, Panda. <laughs> Although no one would know, of course. So take a nap if you need to, friends. Um, James in the house. Hi, James. Thanks for hanging out. Um, and oh, you know what I'm drinking? I am. I've got my Lacroix. I've got lime today. And um, whenever I'm on stream, I like to have my naturally essenced um, Lacroix on hand. Yes, I am trying to uh, practice to get. A, I, I would love to get a sponsorship from Lacroix. Lacroix people, please hit me up if you want to sponsor the show. Um, I had, we we had this funny thing happen the other day. I, I tweeted about it um, earlier or yesterday um, when. I might have told this story. Sorry, I'm getting old. I'm repeating myself all the time. Um, the other day on Saturday uh, night, we had a Renegade game night or game show. Um, thanks to the uh, friends at Renegade Game Studios. And it was a bunch of us um, uh, getting together, content creators, and we did like the Newlywed game. And I was partnered with Amanda. Uh, Mike Murphy was um, partnered with Paula Deming. Nick Murphy was partnered with Suzanne Sheldon. And then Monique and uh, Crystal were um, partners as well. And when we showed up in the green room before like 15, 20 minutes beforehand, you know, I just happened to be drinking a LaCroix hibiscus flavored. And I saw that, I think it was Mike. No, it was Nick that had it. I was like, Nick, you got a, you got a LaCroix. He's like, yeah, I got hibiscus. And I, we started laughing. Oh, that's funny. And then Paula just like, wait, I have the exact same thing. <laughs> and then Mike came on like a minute later and then he had the exact same thing. So four of us, uh, it was it was hilarious. So that's now I'm like I I totally want to get a, a sponsorship for Lacroix. So anyone know any Lacroix people? Well, let's make that happen, shall we? <laughs> uh, Thinker Themer says, why can't we get it here? Oh, Thinker Themer, the, we can totally get you Lacroix. All you have to do move out here to Southern California, and everything you've got all the Lacroix you want. So I'll be looking forward to when you move out here. <laughs> If only that was, it was that easy, right? Deadpan's in the house. Thanks for joining us, Deadpan. Board Game Spam is in the house. Yeah, ceviche, folks. Uh, big fan. Um, this one, I haven't made ceviche in a while. I usually do like a shrimp ceviche. Um, thanks to my buddy. I uh, want to shout out my buddy Cisco, a uh, friend of mine from back in the day, and uh, actually a former roommate too. And he gave me the recipe, and I've used his recipe for years. And, and oh, I love ceviche. Um, and I, the one we had from uh, this uh, restaurant nearby, this local restaurant, wasn't bad. Um, I liked it. We we enjoyed it. But I I think I, I need to make ceviche again. Uh, Slackfish, uh, you know that the La in La Croix does not stand for uh, Los Angeles, right? Oh, is that <laughs> Slackfish? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Slackfish, now that you mention it, I don't know if anyone knows this, but the Los Angeles Lakers and the Los Angeles Dodgers won the 2020 championships in their respective sports. Um, 
Oh, uh, yeah. Thinker Themer's on their way. That's great. Uh, they should be here in about 18 hours. So, yes, Thinker Themer. Look, first LaCroix is on me, friends. Um, we've got um, – so today uh, uh, we've got Jazz coming on. We're going to talk about uh, Lobby Hobbies, how we got into content creation and so forth. Um, we're also going to play Codenames Duet. I want to let you remind you that today was or is Tattooing Tuesday. Uh, every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. First, So I like to start my day by streaming and end my day by streaming. Um, 8 a.m. every Tuesday, I read a chapter out of Star Wars Thrawn. A uh, wonderful book. If you're into sci-fi or Star Wars, highly recommend it. I'm, I'm a Star Wars geek, as you can tell. Um, by this guy here. Um, and I read a chapter every week and then I, I decided to start playing Star Wars games as well. So the last two weeks I've done a Star Wars Risk game. And if you would have seen it this morning, I had like the ultimate like no moment. Um, I was near the end of the game and my cup of tea, I knocked it over onto the table and you can see it on stream just like seriously, like the, the tea is just like creeping up on the board. It hit the board and it hit some cards Thankfully, I had my cards sleeved, and the part that it hit the board, it just barely touched the edge, so I was able to get the board off in time and wipe it down. <clears throat> it, it was one of those crazy moments. Um, I, two of the cards, they the sleeves protected all the cards, but <clears throat> excuse me, um, two of the cards got a little little frazzled by uh, by the tea. Um, so I may have taken a hair dryer afterwards and tried to dry it out. It worked okay, but um, I got new sleeves, put them all in new sleeves, and it's good to go again. Totally playable. Um, but anyways, I can't guarantee things like that will happen every Tuesday. But if you come back Tuesdays, 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. Pacific, I read part of the book. I play a game. Uh, next week, I'm going to be playing <clears throat> one of these adventures here in Star Wars Unlock. So come back next week. Spoiler alert, I'm going to be spoiling at least one of these adventures. I'm not sure which one yet. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Hopefully, if you have time, please join me. That's 8 a.m. Pacific. Then at 10 a.m. Pacific, I try to raid uh, the Brothers Murph. They are now doing Tuesdays, right? Tuesdays. Uh, they're playing a game right now. They're finishing up. Um, what are they? I think they're doing the Paladins of the West Kingdom expansion, which I can't wait to see. Uh, and then this morning, they actually played Baron Park with the, Baron, uh, the Bad News Bears expansion, uh, which Michelle and I actually just happened to play last night. So, um, yeah, Paladins, thank you, Slackfish. Oh, yeah, so good. Um, James says, uh, for Chits and Gills, had a live stream mishap as well. Yeah, it's just one of those things. If you all saw the Galentine stream with uh, Crystal and Ambi, they had like a host of problems and from audio difficulties to a literal uh, a literal head bump of the webcam crystal bumped her head and thing came tumbling down just one of those things you know live stream uh, if there's no problems on a live stream is it really a live stream right uh pantry games did you cry a little i i made a joke about it uh pantry that you know i said if if the cameras weren't on you may have seen a grown man cry <laughs> but honestly, okay, so I, I joked about it. Um, let me just take a quick sip of my naturally es es essenced uh, LaCroix. I need to work on that if I'm going to get a sponsorship. Mmm, delicious. Um, I joked about crying uh, when it, when the T hit uh, those cards, but honestly, it, it, it's a game. It's cardboard. You know, if I if, if it would have ruined it, I, I I'd be bummed, of course. But, you know, I, I know I can find that copy on eBay. It's it's a little expensive right now. It's out of print. Maybe it will always be out of print. I don't know. But I can always get, like, the, the retail version. I have the Black Series version. It's so a little upgrade. Um, but, I mean, I have a few games that I could probably play if, if my Star Wars game got ruined. Star Wars Risk is good, by the way. Um, that was hilarious. Thanks, Thinker Themer. Uh, backed my Paladins expansion today. Oh, you know, I was just gonna say Lobby of Hobbies is backed uh, Paladins. Nice. Uh, Thinker Themer says, this is why rec we record. And when that happened this morning, I, I had seriously thoughts, maybe I should just stick to uh, recording. But this is too much fun. I, I love doing this. Um, let's see. Uh, let's check on the comments. I think I'm caught up on comments. Uh, let's, you know, y'all, y'all been, uh, very patient. Thank you for, um, hanging out with me. Let's, let's bring on our guests, shall we? I'm going to, oh, first, before we bring on our guests, let me take care of some business. So, um, first I want to, I, I don't do this often enough. I need to figure out a way I, I, I need to come up with like a credit screen or something, but I do want to thank uh, my, all of my Patreon supporters, folks. Uh, if you don't, um, if you don't know, I have a Patreon page. Um, you can find it under Ruel Gaviola. I would appreciate any type of support. A lot of you support. I really thank you for that. Um, 
very, very much. It, from the bottom of my heart, it means the world. Uh, I want to thank our special uh, um, patrons, uh, All Access and very important gamer patrons, Mike, Kevin, Chris, Nicholas, Jeff, and Chelsea. That means a lot. I truly appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to come up with some kind of a credits page um, soon. Um, just want to remind you that I also do uh, writing and podcasting. Uh, an article I'd written uh, recently for the Renegade Game Studios blog just came out today. Um, I'm doing a series on the historical figures that have been added to the new version of World's uh, Fair 1893. I think what they did is a really cool thing. They added some um, figures from that time period, 1893 or so, um, that were excluded from being part of the World's Fair 1893. Uh, people like Frederick Douglass, um, IDB Wells, um, also Susan B. Anthony. Uh, these, um, because of the, you know, because of the, uh, the, um, the era that they lived in, right? Uh, segregation, racism, sexism, much more prevalent in American society. So I think it's cool that Renegade went back and said, hey, let's highlight some of those figures. Even though they weren't at the World's Fair, that doesn't mean they didn't contribute to American society as a whole, right? So I've been able to look at one figure per, actually, I looked at two last week. I did one this week uh, on Irvine Garland Penn, an educator journalist. Next week, I got another one coming out in the following week. So please follow Renegade Game Studios for that. It's on their blog um i'm also a recording um i want to let you all know i i i know most of you have seen this but i'm just going to remind you good looking kickstarters it's a series that i started with um becca scott over on good time society um every two weeks right now that's that's the plan going forward every two weeks we look at kickstarters that are really interesting that we would back and that you know just look like a lot of fun uh becca is an amazing host, a uh, super talented person, and uh, grateful for the opportunity to work with her. So we're co-hosting co that. That is actually a recorded thing, uh, Thinker Themer. So hopefully I'll never spill anything on that show, but uh, you, you never know. <laughs> um, so we're recording that. The next episode, I believe, will be out next week. Um, I, I forget what day. Maybe Monday? I, I'm not sure. Maybe um, middle of next week. But uh, we are going to have another episode of that. More more Kickstarters are out. Yeah, there's a bunch that dropped today that I'm sure we'll talk about. But yeah, super excited about that. Uh, helps that the name of the company is Renegade. Oh, correct, Slackfish. Well done. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Self-control, what's that? <laughs> yeah, there is no uh, self-control uh, for board gamers, right? Uh, Pantry asks an important question. What's your favorite Star Wars game? Probably going to go with Star Wars Rebellion. It's a two-player game, epic in scope. Such a good game. Um, let me see what else. Make sure I get all the comments. Uh, thank you, friends, as always, for joining. Um, <laughs> let's not collab on the self-control series <laughs> yeah uh, this is true like if you spill something for sure beck is included definitely i i would not uh, I, it would not surprise me mm, that nat naturally i I'm, i really need to work on that this naturally is essenced naturally essenced water is delicious i really need to work on that thank you for the uh, links amanda please folks um uh, check out those links that Amanda's dropping. Oh, Pantry Games, uh, Outer Rim. That's that's a game I need to try. Okay, enough of that stuff. Let's let's get going on here. Um, today, Jazz Cruz is our guest. Jazz Cruz is a husband, father, and board gaming nerd. He runs the Lobby of Hobbies YouTube channel and podcast, where the goal is for people to enter, share, and discover the world of tabletop games along with discussing other hobbies they may enjoy. His push is building a diverse community and bringing awareness to the hobby along with awareness in the hobby. No matter how different people may be or the backgrounds they come from, as a man of faith, Jazz believes things are things as simple as gaming together at a table can bring them together. He's also a big New York sports buff, Yankees, Giants, Knicks, and he enjoys outdoor activities like camping and fishing. Folks, without further ado, let's bring on Jazz Cruz. Jazz, hello, my friend. How are you? What is going on, Ruel? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. It's, hey, it's an honor. I appreciate, I appreciate your your time, man. This is this is co so cool. We were able to, I I came across uh, Lobby of Hobbies thanks to Tim over at Meepleville, um, yes. and you know Tim is awesome. He's such a he's able to connect so many different people, and I really appreciate the work he's doing. Um, I mean, he's a store owner, and yet he's gotten into content creation, and he does a fantastic job. And uh, Thinker Themer is another. Um, uh, creator that I got in touch with through Tim. Um, so 
you know, I, I really want to thank Tim. I mean, he's not here, obviously, but I want to thank Tim for putting us in, in uh, contact. But um, Jazz, I'm going to jump right into it, man. How let's let's talk about your journey into modern board games. You know, oh, I've man. got I see the I see the shelves behind you. They're filled with a lot of great games. I can tell. And you know, that wasn't that wasn't always the case. Is that correct? Oh, no, not definitely not. Um, like I growing up, I really didn't come from, I would say, a heavy board gaming um, background. I think as a kid, you know, I think all kids somehow get a uh, get a copy of some type of board game. Right. Whether it be, you know, sorry, shoots and ladders, things like that. And for me, I had those like hungry, hungry hippos, mousetrap, like mousetrap for me growing up as a kid was just like putting the mousetrap there to catch the mice. Like I didn't know how to play the game, you know, culturally growing up, it wasn't something that, you know, my family did as, as growing up, my mom was a single parent. So, you know, for the first couple of years of life, my mom was a single parent. She didn't have the time to sit down and play, but we, you know, we did a lot of outdoor activities, things like that. So I was fortunate enough. I play a lot of sports, but it wasn't until I turned around like uh, 2021 that I started trying, you know, board games. And it was my wife and I were dating at the time. I came across, um, I was like, hey, let's go, uh, let's get some board games. Let's do something. I was actually shy to meet her family. So I went to, uh, uh, was it Toys R Us? And I picked up like categories and um, I, I forget the other game that I picked up. Oh, Taboo. And we had a blast. So that night I went home, I, I went on Google and it's like, you know, top board games. So I came across Board Game Geek and I came across um, the Dice Tower channel on YouTube. And that night I probably, no lie, I honestly broke night and like, so I started creating a list of games and the first game I put on my list was pandemic. <laughs> and I was like, my wife at the time was th considering studying pre-med. Now she's actually, um, she's a, a behavioral analyst. So, well, she's studying to be a behavioral analyst. She'll graduate this, this, uh, spring. But, um, at the time I was like, oh, this sounds like a pretty cool theme. I was completely scared by the pieces, but man, once I played <laughs> that, I, I was hooked pretty much that and um and san juan which was like my entry to a set collection i really enjoy set collection games and that one was the game that kind of do that does it for me it's like a classic it doesn't leave my shelf it will always be there yeah and that's uh like san juan and pandemic two very good gateway games right oh yeah um, definitely and uh, the pandemic is the one that got me into the hobby as well um but san juan i didn't get i didn't play until just a couple of years ago and i i I was so surprised. That was such a good game, right? Just mechanically sound and yeah, it was it was one of the games. Yeah, mechanically sound was great, but it was one of those games. I think when I was getting to the hobby, I was watching Tom Vassell's reviews, and I saw that game. And the first thing I thought of was, I'm Puerto Rican. You know, San Juan's the capital of Puerto Rico. I didn't really think so much of of um, the theme theme behind yeah. it, um, but I know the board game Puerto Rico you know, has more of a little bit of a, a meaner colonization type feel as you're doing yep. it. So now that I know that it's kind of, kind of deterred me from it a little bit. Cause you know, that's the colonization of my people, but right. um, you know, I know, I know thinker themers in the house. I am more of a, a definitely a thinker. I, I don't, I don't go on themes. So there's a lot of games that sometimes I don't think so much of the theme as I'm playing, but I've become more aware from channels like Amy and Maggie's about theme and just other people out there. But um, yeah, for me, it's mechanics and pandemic and San Juan were games. That I just continuously played over and over again and I needed to have more. Um, yeah. But from there, like I got into playing a little bit of competitive games like Dice Masters. I was playing that competitively on a national, oh, okay. national level and world level. I was doing wow. that. And, and for me, I had a friend who, you know, was, was my buddy that I started my podcast with. And he was like, oh, I played Magic when I was young. Um, is there any board games like, that? you know, something that's like that? I said, I have no idea. I don't touch any of those collectible games. Like, I just want to get into board gaming. So I was interesting, introducing him to board games. He came across Marvel Dice Masters. And I was hooked. So, like, I stuck away from board games from a while, for a while. Okay. But, my, but my buddy... Um, Isaac that I met through Dice Masters playing competitively. He runs a, a, a board game review channel called uh, Gaming with Sidekicks. And I he started getting heavy into the board game and from talking with him, um, I started looking more back into board games. And I wanna say probably in 2018, 2017 is when I started adding to the collection. And nice. I, moved in, I moved into the house. This is like barn doors behind me. So uh -huh. my, my, wife, my wife had this custom built for me. The year we moved into this house was 2016. And she's like, oh, you have a couple games, you know, you can fill this, fill this cabinet, but I have cabinets on the outsides here that cover these doors are covered. Wow. Um, and she said, those cabinets will be for like decorations and things like that. The, the board games have to stay contained into here. And <laughs> I think there's more board games on, on these outside. Shows. <laughs> like, I'm not, not going to lie. Like they're, they're higher up. I don't have anything on the, on the ground. Cause I do have a daughter who's just under two. So she likes to get into things, oh, but um, yeah, yeah I've, I've 
you know, I put a lock on this cabinet and everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> smart, man. Smart. Yeah. yeah our, our daughter is all grown up. So I've got games all over the floor everywhere. You know, it, it's, it's ridiculous in here. So oh, yeah. Could totally, to totally feel you there. Uh, Slackfish says, um, just going back a little bit, board games are such a great vehicle for interacting with family where you're not sure what you have in common. And that is so true. Um, Slackfish always talks truth here. Um, yes. I would imagine that that was a really great way for you to, you know, enter into this situation where you're really not sure who's who and yeah. what their one's about. And, you know, like an icebreaker, right? Definitely. I think it's awesome. Um, you know, when I have friends that come over that are not gamers, most of the people that I do game with, they're super casual or they're considered non-gamers. Um, they come over and they see my board game collection and it's a talking piece. It's something that's conversational. And they're saying, oh, you know, what, what is all this about? Um, and they'll ask questions like, hey, what is this game about? What's that game about? And I was like, that's probably not where you want to start. Let's start on this shelf here um, if you want to try something out. But again, I would, I would definitely say, and this is not like tooting anybody's horn, but I'm pretty sure a lot of gamers that are in the stream today and just listening, you know, when you bring out a game, I would say 90% of the time, if it's a person's first time playing a game, you know what to bring to the table and everybody seems to enjoy themselves. They en enjoy having that community time, just spending time with people. And that's what I love about board games. It allows that to happen, right? Um, yeah. I think in, in American society, but I think, you know, in the world, we're seeing less and less families, you know, eating dinner at the table together, things like that. And I know for me, I wanted to incorporate that in my, in my family structure, Prior to having kids, my wife and I made sure of doing that when we got married, sitting down at the table when we when we could. Um, yeah. But we, within the first year of marriage, we cut cable, um, nice. and we, we focused on. I said, "Hey, instead of instead of cutting cable, I will even give up video games, and I'll yeah. start I'll start buying board games." Because she would watch me play video games and things like that, but that was not her passion. She would just sit there, but I wanted something to interact. So. I knew we had a couple board games in our collection. They were in my apartment, uh, you know, coat closet. And I started adding more games to the collection. And instead of like movie night, we would just have like just couples game night. And that's where it grew from there. And I, when I said, when we had our daughter, I wanted to kind of, you know, build a collection. I wanted that to be something that we did as a family. So even her at, yeah. you know, she's gonna, she's 20 months now. Um, when we play nice. a board game, you know, we, it's not one of those things where we say, Hey, you know, put her to bed. Sometimes we do depending on how heavy it is, but um, <laughs> we will, we'll, incorporate her at the table with us. You know, she sits on our lap. We have her hold the cards. I, you know, I have her do her best to move the meeples and move pieces around. But, you know, I, I, it, for us, it's always about family. And, you know, with this hobby, you know, it's not only about family, it's only, it's about community. And what I love about, um, Mick and Starless channel is that they, they address the people and, and, um, our family plays games as family. And that's what this community is about. Right. And, you know, that's what I want to help build. And that's what I wanted to do, build in my own personal family, but extend that to my, you know, my extended family, but also my friends that I consider family. And I see um, my buddy, Mike from Pentry Games in the house, you know, yeah, yeah I, you know, those are the type of people that I, I've met through this hobby that I consider family, which is awesome. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's just a wonderful thing to say, Jazz. And that's, you know, that's why I was excited to have you on here because you had that vibe. Like, I just feel like we have not met in person yet, yet. Um, but it's just, you, you just know certain people like, okay, that those, that's my people right there. And like, I yeah. feel like when we eventually meet, we're going to, you know, we're going to hang out and play games and have a good time. I just, I feel like we got that vibe. Um, I, it's just, it's such a great way of looking at things. I, I look at it like this for board games. For me, it's a time to slow things down. I life is fast enough as it is technology, everything else. And, you know, Michelle and I cut cable years ago as well. And we didn't get right into the board game hobby right away. But when we did, we noticed that, hey, when we're playing this game, we tend not to look at our phones. You know, it's like oh, the yeah. phones, you know, they stay away. We just, we focus on the game. We, you know, Michelle and I, we, we have our friendly banter or AKA trash talk, um, <laughs> you know, and, but it's a good time. And it's a way, uh, it's a time away from the, the phones and uh, devices. And then when we would bring games to our family events or have a family over with like uh, nieces and nephews, um, uh, daughter and everything, you know, people, we played the game and it wasn't like, oh, wait, what is it your turn? No, people were like, you know, invested in it and focused. And yeah. it's just such a nice way to slow things down, right? Life is fast enough as it is. Yeah, I, I would completely agree. And as you see, like you mentioned some of the other hobbies that I shared with you, like we, we mm -hmm. my wife and I love in doing outdoor things. So um, we were, uh, before the pandemic, of course, we were, I think, going camping like every year we would schedule a camping trip around my birthday in October. Um, and it was a time for us to just get away, kind of 
you would see, even though we had cell phone service, everybody would just put their phones down. It would be on a charger. We would check it when we needed to. But, um, you know, we would like bring everybody would, hey, would say, hey, Jazz, why don't you bring some board games for us to play, um, you know, in, in, the, in the evening or during the day that we have something to do. And, it, you know, I would bring a game and we would just enjoy that time. But like you said, just decompress, kind of disconnect from the world and just focus on, you know, that community, that time together, which I think has been important. It's what I loved about this hobby. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Uh, Slackfish says, uh, our family play games uh, strikes such a real chord. The great thing about the content creators that I've discovered over the past year is that by and large, they have a genuine perspective that they're bringing to the table. And I agree with that 100% with all the, I mean, you know, there's content creators that have been there for a while. You know, we all know the big ones, but this last year, especially with the pandemic, you know, a lot of people have turned to creating their own content and taking the dive into YouTube or podcasts or Twitch or whatever. Um, and I think it's great because we all bring a different perspective and we call it learn from each other, which is important. Um, Jazz, you know, not everyone creates content though. How, what made you decide to say, hey, I love this hobby. Why don't I pick up the mic and, you know, talk <laughs> about it in a podcast, you know? Well, my buddy Judge and I, um, we knew each other from, I used to run ministry at, at the church. I was the head of that ministry, my wife and I, and he was on my, on my team. And, you know, I had incorporated just board game nights. And from that, he, he you know, we got into doing this. He says he was big into video games. I was big into um, board games. He said, why don't we just combine it and just be a thing where we can just talk about our nerdiness and just an outlet for us instead of just talking, you know, maybe we'll have, you know, the, the youth that we worked with in our church. Um, we, I also work in the community. I work for Child Protective Services in New Jersey. At the time, he was working for um, a, a contracted company that you know I, I, that the state uses, and he was um, he was working with teenagers as well. So, in the midst of doing that, we said, "Why don't we, you know, one day start something where we can just like." put put the you know put the buzz in one of these teenagers ears and say hey you know you know other than such and such the things that are out there you know we run a we talk about board games while you think they're boring you know check it out check what we talk about we talk about video games we talk about things like that so um this year was with the pandemic we we're like let's start it up so we, we started writing things down we jotted stuff together and um jamie stegmeyer had posted um you know that his initiative to help you know bipoc people you know you know black indigenous and people of color to advance in this hobby and let their, their voice be heard. So as we were drafting, I said, you know what, why don't I just share my vision with him? Um, what we were doing, we were, you know, we we're starting to put stuff together. We had some small content and Jamie was so welcoming. You know, he opened, he says, Hey jazz, you know, whatever you need, I'm here. I'll help you out. Um, you know, with any advice, uh, just, you know, send your content over. I would just love to hear what you guys had to have to talk about. And that's what we did. We just started talking about things like that. And then from there, my, my buddy Judge, he's he does he runs his own music production company. So time was a really big struggle for him. Um, and also he's a, he has two daughters and a wife who does you know who does event photography. So their schedule was you know getting super condensed. And I, he's like he told me he says we talked we said jazz. Um, I'm not going to be able to dedicate as much time to the podcast. You know what do you want to do? I said I guess I'm just going to jump on YouTube and start you know changing the platforms a little bit. Um, and we actually were talking today and we said, um, we're going to continue with the YouTube. And then, then we're probably going to, because of his schedule, we're going to make it like a, a monthly podcast. Well, once we get started within the next couple months, um, it's going to be a monthly podcast where we just kind of get together, talk about, you know, hopefully with, you know, getting vac vaccinated and everything, we can get together for some gaming and then talk about those things and just talk about life in general. Because again, we want to share the, the hobbies that we enjoy with our families, with everybody else. And we also want people to share their hobbies with us. So like, although we're, you know, although I have a board game channel on YouTube, you now, one thing I love is with people in the comments, I want to connect with community. You talk about whatever, because I'm I'm always into trying something new. Like this is my hobby. Right. But I like sharing my hobby with other people and then learning what their hobbies are so that I can enjoy it and, and talk to them about it as well. Yeah, yeah, to uh, totally. And again, I, I think that's what I really appreciate about the thing that you're doing here. You're very welcoming. And that not only that, I mean, yes, it is board game focused, but you're still, you know, open to like, hey, let me learn about this or let me learn about that, whatever you're into. I think that's a great attitude. And, you know, it's a, a credit to uh, what you're what you're doing with your channel, uh, Jazz. I really appreciate it. Thank um, you. I, you know, one thing um, I do and another thing I like is that the YouTube channel, so um, it's evolved, right? It's continuing to evolve, and the, I just I'm just looking at some of the things that I've seen on your channel. So you got stuff like uh, three reasons uh, women and uh, people of color are, are underrepresented in the hobby. You have yeah. top 
10 two player games. Then you have things like three ways to get gamers in the hobby. Uh, do you, are you like, do you have certain topics planned or are you just sort of like, Hey, this week we're going to talk about this or, Hey, I'm finally going to get my wife on the, on the channel. Why not talk about this? Um, or is it just, are you just like uh, free uh, freestyling or listen, my wife's, my wife says that I love to freestyle stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny because, you know, ever since we dated, she, she, you know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay it out there. Um, I, she calls me the Casanova, I guess, because I, I just come up with things right off the top of my head. Like a, a song, a song can be on, and I'll just change the lyrics completely. I just freestyle it. But um, with this, it's it's funny because you know I like to share the things that you know like that I'm into. So um, just whatever kind of comes up in my head as I'm going through the week, I kind of jot a note down in my phone. Um, the idea for the the topic, uh, three, three reasons why people of color and women are underrepresented, that sparked simply from a conversation that my wife and I had. And she simply said, Jazz, why are you, like, why are you into this hobby? Like, what is it about board games that keeps you invested, that you keep coming back to it? And I said, I, I had to sit back and I had to think about things. And I said, honestly, the reason I want to, the reason I want to do content creation is because I want to see more people that look like me. Because when I go to these conventions, um, my very first time at a convention, I enjoyed myself. But there were those those awkward moments where I was, you know, looking for a game table to go to. I went by myself. Um, I was looking for a game table to 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 sit at, and just I saw people that were, you know, somewhat. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I think standoffish in their in their nature, right? Um, mm -hmm. They don't. I don't think they necessarily were looking at sometimes me as just a person of color. They're not like me. But sometimes when you're when you're an oddball, you feel that, right? You have this predisposed notion inside yep. that you. Why you don't want others to judge you, you kind of judge others as well, thinking that they are thinking negatively about you. So I, my experience the first day was very awkward. I, I kind of just went home. Um, I was like, man, I wish tomorrow I'm going to, when I get there and they have free gaming, I'm just going to go and I'm going to game. And that's what I did. And I had a, and I had a blast. And the following year, I went with some friends. Um, and that was at PAX Unplugged, and, I, and I've enjoyed myself. And from that, I, I've, I kind of I go to stores like local shops, um, and I just... I've gotten to myself where I just immerse myself, sit at a table and just will learn a game. Um, and people are, like I said, people are very welcoming. You do run into those situations where some people might be, you know, um, you know, not so nice or just a little standoffish. You're still trying to leery about how they are um, engaging with you. But mm -hmm. in the, in the long term, I think I would say a lot of people have been super inviting and I, and I love that. But again, I want to see more people like me in the hobby because I think sometimes growing up, you know, as a minority in my area, while well, I grew up in the suburbs, um, mm -hmm. I, you know, most of my connections were to my family who lived, still lived in the inner city. And for us, um, it was like, you're Hispanic, you play sports. Like, that's just a thing Like you talk about sports, like board games, while it's there, we don't have time to play games because we're so focused on being a working class society that it's about trying to advance, get an education the best you can, you know, work hard and do those things. We don't have time for games. Um, that's just a, a, that's just a recreation. You can't, you can't do anything outside of that. But, you know, I want people to know that, yes, there, there is more, and there's, there's not only an enjoyment of games, but there is a lot of life lessons that you can learn from games, which is something that you know, I, I did on my one of my recent videos, like the five life lessons that I've specifically learned from the board gaming hobby, you know, and and I want people to know that I want people to understand that everyone that this hobby, while it's fun, it's also something that you can learn life lessons from as well and incorporate them out into the real world. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I want to circle back to our friend, our mutual friend, uh, Tim uh, Metevier over there at Mubleville. I remember talking to him and he, he said something that really, it, it still sticks to me to this day, where he was talking about, and um, you actually had a conversation with him about, you know, how he was trying to reach out to schools and get, you know, gaming programs and gaming clubs in more schools. And there was all the, he's met with some resistance because people think it's games and stuff. But the thing he said to me, Jazz, was, you know, when you th when you think about it, you know, games help critical thinking, right? Because anytime you're going to make a move, you know, out on the table or wherever you, or whatever you're playing on the board, you have to think about the ramifications and what's going to happen to your piece or whatever. And it really does help students and even students uh, outside of uh, class, you know, really think about their situation. And, um, yeah. you know, it, it gives them those skills that they need. Like, I again, I'm a terrible game player, but I, I'm still <laughs> thinking about like, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to I'm going to suck at this. But at least I've thought it through. Right. Yeah. Um, so. You know, it's awesome. I looked at Slackfish and asked me a question about. Um, yes, I was just going to bring that up. I, 
I'll put it on the, I'll, I'll put it on the board right now. Sorry, uh, Jazz. It's really interesting that you mentioned a background in ministry. Do you feel that your board game content shares a similar feeling of wanting to outreach and connect with people? Um, yeah, like I said, um, I think one thing that I have, like I, I you know, I'm one who's. Um, I always used to say when I used to run ministry, I was um, my transparency breeds authenticity, right? Um, so I like to be transparent with people because um, they're the same way I am. I don't look at myself as being at, at the top of the chain or being in charge of something and looking at the people down at the bottom. We have to work together and we have to learn from each other, right? Um, and w- while doing outreach with that, I think this hobby works great because um, that's what I look at. This is something that I outreach. I want to share with other people and bring them into the fold. And like you said, you know, I mentioned while I might have one belief system and others have completely different belief systems. Hey, everybody is welcome at my table. I have friends of all race, ethnicity, background, you know, li- you know, uh, life, life, uh, life situation, whatever the case may be. I love people. And, you know, and that's what it's about. It's about just loving people. And this hobby is about, you know, I love the hobby and I want to love the hobby with other people. You know, that's exactly. what I enjoy. Yeah. Well, well said, man. Well said. Yeah. Again, I think that's where we are very similar in that outlook. You know, it's like, yo, it don't matter, you know, whether you're a Lakers fan or a Knicks fan or whatever, you know, we're all hanging out here. We're playing games, right? I am a LeBron hater though. I'll be honest. Oh no. Transparency, right? Transparency. (laughs) Video over. Thanks for joining us folks. This has been Jazz Cruz. (laughs) No, LeBron, man. That's like the top five player of all time. Top all, five time of all. Oh, yeah, I'll give him top five. I'll top five, but he's definitely okay, not. Thank he's, you. he's definitely not Jordan esque. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, LeBron level. He's not Jordan esque. End end of okay. end of uh, discussion. <laughs> so here here's my thing about LeBron. The reason why I love him so much because he reminds me of Magic Johnson. He is the evolutionary. Um, continuation of magic johnson magic johnson a former laker five-time uh, nba champion you know he was my favorite laker of all time my favorite player and then lebron has taken that to the next level it's magic johnson and carl malone's body with that you know it just it's, it's amazing what he does uh, on the court and we can sit here all night i'm sure and talk about basketball yes. oh, yeah listen he's a physical specimen i gotta give it to him you know yeah. i think we graduated the same year um yeah he's a he's a physical specimen yeah and here's bottom shelf board uh games lebron's the best player i've ever seen i may leave this comment up for the entire uh show here i'm not sure but uh, i want to shout out um uh james is in that oh yeah i said hi james gb glares is in the house uh joe's in the house tommy's in the house thank you all friends board game spam is here as well griff dog Thank you all for tuning in. I'm here with Jazz Cruz of the Lobby of Hobbies. We're just talking about board games, um, you know, what it's meant to uh, his life and how he's gotten into things. Uh, we just talked about how he got into content creation. Jazz, if there's one thing that you could tell someone that's looking to get into content creation, can you offer any, like, either one tip or just talk about maybe a challenge that you had that you could help um, others out with? Um, I just say, just jump in. Like there's never, there's never going to be a perfect situation as much as you plan, like, like you can plan everything in life in general. Right. But mm-hmm. you, you, you don't know what you're going to run into until you just jump head in. Sometimes with this, I, people were telling me, I was like trying to plan strategically and they said, no, just do it. Um, just, just put yep. content out there. You'll learn as you go. Um, you know, I'm, I, I live in the Philadelphia area. So, you know, the Sixers thing was trust the process. You know, yeah. it is, it's like, it's like, it really is. It's a trust the process type thing because you are going to learn. Um, you know, I've been, I've been thankful to meet, you know, other great content creators like yourself that we're learning along the way. We're learning from each other. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's what it is just getting started. Like if I was to say my biggest challenge was getting started because I was afraid to jump in. Um, but I think it's also my biggest challenge is staying on schedule. Like I said, I have, I have a wife and I have a daughter that, you know, family for, to me comes first. So uh, if any, if and I always told my wife, if my content creation gets in the way of us being a family or doing the things that we need to do as a family, you let me know, keep me in check um, because that's, I, I don't want that to be the case. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. about, you know, staying on schedule to, cause you want to, you know, create the content that you want to put it out there for people, but you also want to have a, this this balance. I think it's always about knowing what the balance in life is, and that's just what it comes down to. Absolutely, yeah. That that's a huge a huge thing to remember is balance, right? Um, I, I think those are great. Excuse me, great points. I mean, you you can get that whole. It's almost like getting analysis paralysis before you <laughs> launch your channel, right? It's like, oh, I want, I need to do this, need to do that. Oh, I see someone with a better mic than me or a better camera setup or lighting, whatever. Like you can go crazy thinking about that stuff. But yeah. um, I'm again, uh, we, we see things similar. Like, just get out there and do it. And we all, we're going to embarrass ourselves regardless. I mean, I've got puppets. I, I use puppets on my stream spoken. Also like this, I've got Felicia <laughs> Followfish. We have a new follower right now. It is 
uh, True Ruiz. Thank you, True Ruiz. Felicia, follow his shows up. She welcomes new followers, and then she takes off. And we all say, including chat, bye, Felicia. Bye, Thanks Felicia. for the follow, True Ruiz. Yes, thank you, Jazz, for uh, playing. Thank you. And thank you, Thinker Themer, uh, Mana Panda, all y'all. Appreciate it. Um, uh, once again, we are hanging out with Jazz Cruz of the Lobbies of Hobbies. Thank you, friends, for joining us. Um, Jazz, before we, we're going to play a game in just a minute. Um, before we get going here, I want to get your take on some very important subjects here. Oh, yeah. um, New, New York Yankees. What's what's going on with the Yankees this year? And, um, um, and well, it's, it's a two-part question. Number one is what's happening with the Yankees. And number two, um, well, the second part was going to be talking about the Dodgers. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the first part first. So what's up with the Yankees this year? Listen, I'm going to be honest and say um, – that I honestly don't know. I think we like I'm I'm comfortable with where our lineup looks from an offensive standpoint. Yeah. I like what, what we're doing defensively, but I I'm always one that comes it's not only defense first, but man, pitching wins yep. matchups, right? Absolutely. And that's one thing I noticed. Oh, it's funny because I'm looking at True Ruiz. That's my brother in law in the comments. And I was just gonna say he's gotta he's gotta know you. I've see, I see the boo. I'll, you know, I'll, just for you, Jazz, I'm putting up the boo. <laughs> There, that's that's for you, Jazz. But you know, he's a, he's a big Phillies fan. So is my oh, wife. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I think it's it's all about having that um, having a pitching staff that's going to solidify. So I think that's where we need. I, I think we're making the right the right pieces um, yeah. and picking and picking up what we need. We, you know, I think who, I, I forget the. I haven't been watching my um, creating content. I haven't been watching a lot of my ESPN. Um, same. Same. But, but you know, I know we made a couple moves on, on the pitching staff, and I think that's where we need to lock it in. Because man, was I I was rooting for a Dodgers um, Yankee series. You know, yeah. it just this makes Definitely. me think of like back when I was younger, and that will yeah. back growing up. All you know, people who are older, they were saying you know, those Brooklyn Dodgers New York Yankees matchups. You know, those were the things that you lived yep. to hear about. And I, and I wanted to, I wanted, kind of wanted to relive that experience. So. Same here, and you know, I, I always think about my friend uh, Ryan Green, rest in peace. Um, for he was like the biggest Yankees fan I've ever known, and you know, I'm a Dodgers fan, so anytime we 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 you know we we moved away from each other years ago but we kept in contact we we were good friends and before he passed away he had always called me up and say hey, gaviola you know the yankees got 27 championships right i was like yes i i know all about it mr green yes thank you for reminding me yet again um but yeah that that's like the classic matchup right you've got brooklyn versus the bronx you know so yep. yeah one of and, these days yeah hopefully one of these days. Yeah. Um, yeah, but thank, yeah, thanks, Jazz. I, you know what? Uh, before we, you know, let's we'll tie it back into um to games. We both love baseball highlights twenty forty five. Yes, that game is outstanding. Do you have any other sports games that rank high on your list? And like, um, baseball highlights is probably my favorite sports game, board game um, that is. When it comes to sports board games, I did have football highlights that I wound up trading off to a friend. And it's not that the mechanics were great, but I think mm. baseball highlights was where it was at. Um, like, I think there was their like pizza box baseball I tried. It wasn't yeah. like everything was like baseball oriented that I wanted to try out. I think I tried one of the other. Um, There's one of those, another football game. I forget. Was it first and 10 or something like that? Yeah, um, yeah that's right. I played that at a local game shop. But for me, really baseball highlights is probably the only board it's not on my shelf because i have a buddy that's borrowing it right now um nice. but i went out and i bought the play mat you know i'm a play mat person so <laughs> yeah the top, the top of my board game shelf is like just stacks and stacks of play mats but um yeah it's, it's a game that i i enjoy it's one of those things that even though it's a sports game you don't have to a sports theme you don't have to be a sports fanatic to enjoy the game um right. you know you can just understand the mechanics and really enjoy it um yeah. You know, and and Agreed. I didn't I didn't get it on what's the the one from a Mario Akil um, Hoop Gods Hoop Gods I didn't, get, I didn't get in on that, but I think a buddy of mine did. Um, yeah. I do, I did get Rap Gods, and I gifted it to um my friend Judge, and that oh, cool. that's a. That game was a blast. We we yep. we love it. Um, but yeah, Hoop Gods is one I, I definitely want to check out. Um, I'll yeah. probably pick it up later at some point. But yeah, I, I think yeah, I, I think you're gonna like. I I was able to very fortunate to play it with Omari um, on Tabletop Simulator, and I thought it was great. And you know, after I played it with him, I immediately backed it, of course. Um, and uh, I, a couple of funny comments here. Uh, first of all, Slackfish says, "Don't you start talking about Pedro Guerrero?" Um, hey, the Dodgers traded away Pedro Guerrero for John Tudor, which led to the 1988 World Series championship for the Los Angeles Dodgers. So, uh, shout out to Petey. Uh, bottom shelf says, "Best sports game is Happy Salmon." I agree. That's probably the most physical game I have. Oh, we, uh, we have a blast with that one. <laughs> yeah, I love Happy Salmon. That one uh, is. 
um, a staple at our uh, well before COVID. That was like our Christmas yeah. uh, our Christmas party we would have at nice. our house. And that happy salmon went over well. I think the five families that we've, we've shown that to have, have purchased it. And then Thinker yeah. Themer introduced me to um, Taco Cat Goat Fit Goat Cheese Pizza. That was I haven't played that one yet. Is that good? That has um, probably taken the place of Happy Salmon for us, but we, oh. we enjoy. It. What really? Oh yeah. my. Okay, yeah, I need to play it then because Happy Salmon is honestly top ten game for me. I love Happy Salmon. So I like you know I'm an Omni gamer. I've got Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition. I've got. You know, Terraforming Mars, Brass Burnham, and I've got ta Happy Salmon. Those are definitely in my top 10. It's like, oh, I need to play Taco Cat. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, real quick here, let me check the... Um, the I love this comment from Dicker Themer. I'm a playmat person, understanding of 2021 chat. <laughs> well, Amy Amy knows my love of, um, of <laughs> pimping out um, board games and yep. their content. And um and beware, we're working on some uh some content regarding or centered around that. So it'll nice. become I love it. I cannot wait. That's brilliant. That's great. Jazz, thanks for taking the time out to uh hang out and talk with me. Why don't we play a game, friend? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. Go ahead and make sure you're logged into the game. So, friends, um in chat, thank you again for hanging out. I'm here with Jazz Cruz of the lobbies lobby of hobbies. We're gonna play some code names duet. Uh, let me start the game here, and I'm going to share the screen. So be sure not to look at the screen, Jazz. We are going to be go into secret mode here, or I'm going to go to public mode here so everyone can see. Okay, here we go. All right, friends. So here it is. If you haven't played Codenames Duet before, this is the two-player cooperative version of Codenames. Um, Jazz and I each have our um, – we look at this board. We have different words that, are, that we need to get our um, – partner to guess. Uh, those are the ones, um, they're one, two, three, four, five, nine words. We each have nine words. Three of them overlap. And then there are three words that are um, the assassin. So if we pick the assassin, if you know code names, the, the game is immediately over. So what we do is, um, I'll, I believe I start first. Yeah. I'm going to give a clue to Jazz. He's And I'm going to give a number. Th that clue re um, references that number of words. And then he has to guess. If he guessed correctly, then that's one of the um, the uh, spy, or I think it's one of the spies we we've guessed, I guess, on our team or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. I forget the whole theme of this. I, it's been a while since I played. Now that I think about it. Yeah, so it's um, like a, I think there's a, we have to get 15 correct within nine turns. Um, my oh, wife, we played. We we love this game. Um, it's uh -huh. good, replaced regular code names for us, but yeah. Um, I win only because she's good. <laughs> yeah, and that's I, I feel like that's the only re reason why I win too because Michelle uh, gives a better clues than I do. Um, so yeah, so uh, we've got our cu work cut out for us, uh, Jazz. We're gonna we're gonna try to get these fifteen clues. <laughs> so I'm gonna look at the words here. Uh, I almost said out out loud one of the answers. So that that's what we're dealing with here. Um, let me see. Do 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 do. So I don't want to say again, folks. Uh, if you're at home, you don't want to give the clues in black. Those are the assassins. The game is over if they guess that. So what I'm going to do is, um, uh, boy. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to do this. Um, okay, I'm going to start uh, real simple here because I don't want to take up too much time. Um, I'm going to give this clue. Online one is the clue, and then Jazz has to try to guess this man online I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna ruin it from the door like, <laughs> me too at least we're in the same boat man <laughs> well when I'm, when I'm looking at this honestly the first thing that pops up when i go online is how many times i uh am on amazon so i'm gonna go with <laughs> look at that folks yes nice all right well done jazz look at that folks so, so you will... have Anytime you get a correct answer, uh, folks, you have the option to guess again, but obviously there's no point in doing that now because um, that, that's it. Uh, actually, real quick, uh, before we get going here, uh, Griff Dog says, recently had a chance to play Brian Sewer's fishing games, and they were fun sports theme games. I've never played that before. Oh, I actually have uh, Freshwater Fly that I still have not yet got to the table. Oh, so okay. Cool. So yeah, that, that one's a set collection game. And I think the other one is Cold Water Crown, which is a worker placement game. Mm -hmm. And I'm a worker placement junkie, so I've got to check that one out. Yeah, nice. <laughs> cool. 
cool. Okay, so now, you know, while, before I I know you're supposed to give a clue, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bother you again. Uh, what's what are uh, maybe your what's your favorite or top three um, set collection games? What is one of the your favorites, Jess? Um, when it comes to set collection game, I would have to definitely say um, Sam. Um, mm-hmm. One that I've recently played a lot of. Um, like I, when I think of set collection, I'm thinking like also engine builder type games. I had fun really playing um, Herbaceous recently that I just reviewed. Oh, so love that game. Yeah, yeah, love that game. Um, and man, another set collection tried off the top of my head. Um, oh, one that I that just I'm thinking of that's it's a it's interesting type set collection. There's a little bit of take that is the one from um, Grandfather Beck's games. Um, Cover your kingdom. Oh, okay. I have not played that one yet. I've heard that's good though. It's definitely fun. Um, but okay. yeah, when I think of, like engine builders, uh, like that, that kind of have that set collection, you're trying to acquire things is um, mm-hmm. like fantastic factories kind of hits the, like kind of hits that Love realm for me. Where- but it's really not much set collection. Um, but also the set collection aspect of wingspan. I love, I love like trying to kind of stack those birds yeah. under there. So very yeah. nice. Great choices. Okay, I'll, I'll shut up now so you can um, do your clue. Actually, I won't shut up. I'm going to talk to chat. Um, uh, Joe asks, is chat allowed to you? Yeah, uh, chat, feel free to guess. Let, let's hang out. We're, it's a casual game. I uh, want to shout out Benita. Uh, hello, Benita. Thanks for joining us. Um, folks, if you don't follow Benita, please follow her. She's awesome. And she does the best click clock videos. So that, that's what I call TikTok because I'm old. Um, but uh, she she's on point with all of her content. Thank you for joining us, Benita. Um, Pantry okay. games, a lot. Yeah, I'm a, a worker placement fan as well. Pantry, and I think I'm all caught up in chat. I need to try out that game. Oh man, this gets I feel like <laughs> I go to here with this. Um, I'm gonna, I guess, I'm going to try and go with uh, let's see, does this it's going to okay, so let's do. Hopefully, all right, let me double check, make sure I'm not giving something. All right, so let's go with that. Liquid 2. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Liquid 2. All right, I'm going to talk this out. Uh, liquid. So right off the bat, I, I see beer right off the bat for liquid. Um, liquid could also be, oh, my God. Okay, see? Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to, I'm just going to, uh, I want to press beer. I hope that's it. Okay. All right. Here's one. Okay, cool. Now, do I go for the second clue? This is the interesting part because I see what's liquid. Swamp has liquid. It's dirty liquid. Um, sweat has liquid. It's also dirty liquid. Um, I, do I do I go for like trying to stretch this out and say, Noah is liquid because Noah and the Ark, and you know there was a plenty of liquid during Noah's time. That's <laughs> oh, why yeah, he built the Ark, right? I, I don't think that's it, but um, okay. Oh, uh, here's a, here's another one. Do I go? Uh, oh, no, that that's not that's that's just dumb. Okay, what I'm gonna do? Do I, and I and again I don't have to go. I can stop here if I wanted to, folks. Um, we did beer. Um, yeah, uh, Slack. This is Slackfish right here. Uh, this is so true. Uh, Ru, I was overthinking. Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna go with sweat. All oh, right. okay, cool. Got two of them. I don't know. If, again, we don't know if that's exactly what um, uh, Jazz was talking about, but I'm gonna guess. Uh, end my guessing there. So we've got two. Okay. So now it's my turn. And uh, feel free to hang out with chat for a second, Jazz, while I. Oh yeah, this. definitely. Don't worry, don't worry, Slackfish. I overthink it too. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is the toughest thing about this game is like when you when you give clues and you're like, oh, I didn't notice a word or something. And, totally. Or when it's so close to you know one of those um, the, the the taboo words that you can get. I'm like, oh yep. my goodness. Totally. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go with. I've got a clue. I've got a number. Benita o- over here um, blaming losing losing games on her dad. Come on, Benita. <laughs> oh, Benita. Oh, Joe says uh, Tokaido is what I think for set. Yeah, that is like a ton of set collection in that game. That's a great one. I recently played the app. I think I got it like for dirt cheap, and I, I love it. I was like, I gotta I gotta actually play the physical 
Um, yeah, but, yeah. Oh, so you haven't played the physical Tokaido yet? No, I've only played it in the app, and and the app oh, is beautiful. But man, the, the game gorgeous is so, app. Yeah. yeah. That game, uh, in in the real life version, it's such a chill, like relaxed game. And yes. I I think that game, uh, once you play it a couple times, uh, it gets a little samey. I think, but you add the expansion, and it, it really it, it's it's a great game. Nice. All right. So. Uh, Pentry's asking who is green and who's white. Oh, I don't know. Am I? I, I think am... um, I think we're. Tr I'm trying to guess your green words. Correct. And you're trying That's to right. guess my green words, and yeah. the white ones are like the neutral words. Right. Uh, so, um, Pentry, um, what Jazz is looking at is going to be different than what you are seeing. You're just seeing my side right now. Yeah. So I'm going to go history two. Um, the first one that pops out to me is Cleopatra. Um, That's one of them. Nice. And then. Uh, whew. I'm gonna go with my gut, and like I, I like to go for the gusto. And I think Noah, because we're th we were talking, we're talking about you know biblical history recent right just now. So I'll go with Noah. Look All right, at that two for so, two. Um, and I, yeah, I'm not gonna um, press my luck anymore. So I'll end my guessing there. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, Slackfish says you're not allowed to say. Oh, what did I say? I don't know what I said. I'm not allowed to say something. Did I break the rules already? I I'm used to it. Um, no, I'm used to it as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> we need every edge we can get. Come on. Listen, you bend them in, in co-op games every once in a while, right? <laughs> or like you draw that one card in Pandemic, you're like, uh, let's let's replay this back. Let me use let me use that uh, that, <laughs> you know, that, that that what is it the um the flight where you can kind of you know fly somewhere? Oh, you know, the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the helicopter. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, Slackface says you're not allowed to acknowledge that he got the one you were intending. That's right. That's oh, that okay. is true. Yeah. Okay, so let me look at here. I'm trying. I got. Uh, let's see how many. One, two, mm. one, two three, four, five. So we need one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. I gotta say, this is pretty cool to play it online like this. It's it's really it's a clean interface and it's pretty easy to figure out what you need to do here. Oh yeah, this is this is awesome. I, I think yeah. I would play this more. Um, so man, this is going to be difficult. Uh, yeah. And man. while you're figuring out a clue there, yeah. A uh, couple of comments here in chat. CG online is really great. Agreed. And, uh, Benita also likes us a lot. Nice. I'm wondering if when Benita plays this and she loses, does she also blame her father for the loss? <laughs> Well, she said she said that he tried. He thought it was a um, a competitive game, so he was trying to make her oh, lose. Like I said, I think it. she was just saying that she's just saying that because they lost. Got it, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Benita, I can I can feel Benita yelling at me right now. Oh man, what is? Uh... AJ's also played this on TTS. Oh, nice, cool, cool, cool. Okay, let's go with this. Let's see how creative I can be, but not being, okay. All right. So we'll go with my clue tune two. Tune two. Okay. I see two right off the bat. Um, I'm going to go with sound. Ugh. Oh no. Oh, okay. So now that, that ends the turn because I got it incorrect. Right. It, it, it was a uh, innocent bystander. So my turn is over. So if, uh, friends at home, if you're, if you're watching at home again, remember that tune two, and it wasn't sound. Um, oh, now I think I see one. Darn it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that's, what's interesting. Like I, I'm going to yeah. remember that for the next turn. Okay. Uh, Benita says, uh, I was going to pick sound too. Thank you, Benita. Um, so now I've got to pick. Oh, okay. Um, oh, no. I, oh, I almost gave it away. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go with measure two. Ooh. Okay. I have two that are jumping right out at me at the present, and I'm going. The first one I'm going to go for is ruler. My wife uses that clue every time ruler's out. So. <laughs> I'm not going to say a thing. I don't want to break the rules here. Um, so 
and I will continue measure. I'm gonna over. I'm overthinking it because technically there are two, um, but I'm gonna go with my gut and say meter. Ugh. Innocent bystander. Okay. Okay. So we've got four innocent bystanders left. Okay. Does it tell us where what turn it's on? What turn we're on? Uh yeah, we have four guesses left. Oh, and, okay, got it, got it. Okay. And we still have nine words to get. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so while um Jazz is looking at that, I'm going to say hi to chat. Eclectic Camel's in the house. Thanks for joining us, Eclectic Camel. Um, I said hi to AJ, but hello again, AJ. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um Slackfish does bring up a great point. I think an underrated aspect of the development of this game is the pool of words. It does a really great job of creating interesting overlaps. Agreed. Now, for this game, uh, folks at home, we are using the regular code names words and also a mix mixed in with the code names duet words. You, you can select that when you create the game, like which decks of cards you're going to use. Okay, so. I've got to uh, be smart about this. Yep. And I'm glad you're you are because I'm not. <laughs> uh, Benita um, says I have almost all the code names. So I just mix. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Do do all the code names together. Uh, Benita, I think it may be time for a code names uh, click clock. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's go with. I'm gonna get a little gutsy here. I guess you would call it right. And say loud three. Loud three. Okay. So sound is obviously out. That's an innocent bystander. Okay. Loud three. Okay. Um, loud. I'm going to go with an engine. I, I think of a loud engine. Is that right? Okay, right. uh, that, that's uh, that's a, a correct answer. We don't know if that's what uh, answer, yep. Jazz was talking about. Loud three, and we have tune two. Okay, um, I was thinking of one. Okay, loud. We, we so we're getting close to. Um, we've got four guests left, folks. So I figure we need to uh, get some stuff right here. So I'm going to go with. I think tune might have been bass. Again, we're not going to tell exactly. Uh, jazz can't tell us if that was the one or not, but I'm going to go with that. Um, so I think I got two more for, um, you know, I'm going to turn to chat. I'm going to chat. You're going to be my lifeline. Uh, let's see. Pantry's base engine dryer. Okay. We got the engine. We got base dryer is interesting. I, I thought about that for a second. What do y'all think in chat? Let, let me know. Um, dryer or tiger. Yeah. A tiger is, that's what I was thinking too for loud. Um, Hmm. You know, I'm going to go with chat, and if we are wrong, just like Benita's father, I'm going to blame all of you. <laughs> We're going to go with Tiger. It is an innocent bystander. Boo earns. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, okay. Thanks, chat. Um, yeah, I thought like Tiger roars. You know, that, that's what I thought. But, oh, we said dryer. Okay. My bad, Benita. Okay. Y'all said dryer. I owe you one. Uh, now we got to give a clue to Jazz. And Jazz, I'll let you take over chat there. All right, yeah. So I, I like that idea that Benita had talking about like mixing the sets. I only have the original code names and then this one. Um, but yeah, I actually picked this one up. I was telling Ruel earlier for like five bucks at my local Target. Um, so yeah, if you're out there, Target is awesome. Like you get to, you know, I think that's that's my place to go to, especially when it comes their board game collection's been awesome there. Um, there's like this. Uh, I always, I always get in trouble going there because I get stuck talking to people in the board game section, like trying to you know sell them games or give them suggestions. Anybody else do any of that? <laughs> I, to, I totally do that. Man. Yeah, it's it's like, who is this guy? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Benita, the buy two get one free deals. They're good. They're they're incredible. And I'll be honest, they match pricing too. So if you're at if you're if you find something cheaper at Walmart, but your target's closer, like mine is, they'll match that price. Oh, I have a clue. I don't know if I, it's legal to do this. Maybe I, uh, you know what? I'm not going to do it. 
Um, oh, because oh man, but it would be. I think it'd be good. Is this a word? That's the thing. Oh, so Benita says Amazon. They match Target matches Amazon prices too. I got it. Man, yeah, they you, do. Benita. I know that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, I'm gonna do Ka two. <laughs> ka. What, what two. is Ka? Oh, no. All right, all right, all right. Ka. <laughs> I, I think that's where we're at with call. I, I think it's a word, right? You know, folks in chat, what do y'all think? Is that a word? Is it a sound? Because <laughs> if it's a sound, Ruel, you've got to say the sound. Like hey, uh, Benita says it's a word. I trust Benita. Okay, okay. Benita. I got to take your... your uh, Joe also does. Oh, Sackfish, Joe. Yeah, yeah. It's a word, folks. All right. So I'm going to... Oh, GB Glazer. It's an onomatopoeia. Oh, my gosh. That is... Folks. Yeah, you, some yeah, people... You're right. Busting out that those English terminologies. I, I did okay in English, guys. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, Jazz, we have the smartest audience on the internet here. I got to give it to them because, like, right now, <laughs> well, when I first thought of call, the first thing I thought of, I'm going to go with my gut, is okay. Robin. Okay. So, yeah, so okay. I'm thinking of a bird. Okay. Um, and you said two. So the bird makes a sound. Oh, here it is. Uh, Joe's got the definition to utter the harsh, raucous, natural call of the crow or a similar cry. All right, so I had a call. Caw -caw. Oh. That, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Nice. All right, so all right, we'll go there. Okay, cool, cool. Looks good, and then I will, yeah, I will end my guessing there. Okay. Okay. So I've okay one two three. And we've got two turns left, and we need five words. Five words. Okay total between okay. the two of us and was the tune that was your clue right tune yes my, my okay my, i think tune. it shows on the game log you can see. there it is yeah game log thank you look at that so tune two measure two loud three okay okay that, that's great to have that game log that, that was great yeah this is what, okay what cg has done with this is incredible agreed agreed Okay, so I feel buy, like buy it type things. Okay, let me see. Hmm. Thinker Themer's out here. Thank you for stopping by, Thinker Themer. My best to you both. Yes, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later in the future. In the future. Yes. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, my gosh. Uh wow, I'm stumped. What should I do? Okay. So uh just go in here. So call to loud three measure two history two liquid two online one. Um okay, I'm gonna give Okay, I'm hoping that. Um, so this, uh, do we have two more turns after this, or is, is this it? I think this would be one, and then uh -huh. I would have. I think I have the last turn. I okay. think. So I could. I just put all the pressure on you by giving you a one-word clue here. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is. Uh, I don't want to do that because so I got to give you at least two words for this. Um. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, so I'm gonna... is that if we run out of turns, we can just guess until we get one wrong. That's true. Good. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go with. Um... Oh, it's your turn to give a clue. I thought it was my turn. Um, oh. Oh, my side. Oh, wow. There oh, we go. my bad. Any clue? No. I'm, I'm having. I'm having a brain fart. Yeah, Thanks. no, me too. I, I totally thought it was my turn. Okay, so it is uh, Jazz's turn. Okay. All right, so let's think of remembering my clues. Yeah. I remember what clues I've given. Yeah, which uh, is great with that game log. There, There's all your clues right there. 
and this is one that I started, I actually started doing recently is my wife's idea was writing our clues down. So this is cool nice. that we have this. Nice. Um, all right. So I've given tune, I've given. You can probably do this at home, right? Just each of you got your laptop or whatever and yeah, so log in. And, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Loud liquid. Okay. I've given liquid. I've given tune. I've given loud. I'm going to go with. Oh. Uh, I'm stuck. Oh no, <laughs> I'm stuck. All right, you're uh, good. You're good. No pressure. So the five on the screen—that's how many we, how many clues we need to guess, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go with the word I, I, I'm certain things I, I can't say right I can't yeah no say. we need to I'm tense yeah this is totally but am I allowed to say? That's the thing. Am I, am right. I, all right. Just don't overthink, Ruel. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. Think. Do you think. think. All right. <laughs> Neanderthal too. Okay. Neanderthal. Okay. I've got one. I'm not going to overthink it. We're going with cave. Okay. The second one has got me though. This is where I'm. I'm a little worried. All right. Neanderthal. Okay. <laughs> And well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk. I'm allowed I'm, to say something and then not say it. What's that? I, I, I don't. I want to say something, but then I don't want to say. It. I'm just going to. Yeah, save it for the yeah, save yeah. it for the end. <laughs> what I'm going to do though is I'm going to look at your old clues. So online liquid was good. History tune, which we may have gotten here in or loud than Neanderthal. Okay, people were saying drier for some reason. I think it was. Were y'all saying dryer for a reason? I'm going to pick it. Yes. Okay. Um, so I think that was loud. Again, I'm just talking it out, folks. Um, call, oh, that was my clue. Um, loud measure. Okay. Someone's a uh, game with sidekicks. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, What's going on, Gaming with Sidekicks? That's my buddy right there. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Game with uh, Sidekicks. Oh my god. So basically we have three words left. Um people were talking about head. I'm gonna go with head. Just I'm gonna shut up and just do it. Oh, it's a innocent bystander. Boo earns. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, Joe, that's what I was thinking too. Neanderthal is the, the prominent head. It, it was not it, unfortunately. But we have three clues left. Um Okay. Do I do this? Okay, I'm not going to overthink it. This is this is the clue I've I've got. I'm going to change it from I'm going to do on here. Two. Okay. There you go. This is it for all the marbles. Unclear. Okay, unclear, unclear. All right. So, the chat can't see what's on my side. Correct. But there's two, so which makes it difficult because, all right, there's three words total. You're giving two, um, and I'm going to. Oof. Yeah, this clue is unclear, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, AJ Gamer, have a good night. Thanks for joining us tonight, yes, Frank. AJ, thanks for joining. Um, unclear. Take your time, Jazz. While you're doing that, I'm going to welcome a new follower uh, by bringing out Felicia Followfish. Folks, Felicia Followfish, if you're new around here, Felicia Followfish comes in, swims around, says hello to new followers, and then she takes off. And as we say around here, including chat, Bye, Felicia. Bye, uh, Felicia. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Usual 21 or, or the deuce one. Um, I don't know what you go by, but thank you for the bye, Felicia's chat. And we've got Jazz. 
We've got three uh, clues. Can we do it? All right. So when I think of unclear, I'm just going to go with it right off the bat. We were uh -huh. talking about uh, things that were not clean. When I think of things that are not clean, they're not clear. You can't see through it. So un unclear. Hmm. That was difficult. Uh, I am going to mess this up, Ruel, and I'm going to say sorry from the. No worries. I'm We're in this together, brother. Swamp. Well, that's one correct. Okay. We got two more. Unclear. Let me go through. So we had oh, measure. I said, okay, so you said measure two, and I said ruler, and I'm just going to go through ruler. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Just look at the that's game log there. I missed. Mm -hmm. Usual 21 says, I love Jazz's glamour shot for the promo of this event. Agreed. Uh, listen, my, my buddy Pentry Games is here, and the first thing he texts me, he's like, so this was the picture that you sent? I said, listen, my phone is, has nothing but pictures of my wife and daughter on it. Like, He's like, have you ever taken a selfie before? Yeah, my daughter takes all my selfies. <laughs> it's like a picture of the ground. So that's the only shot I have. <laughs> I love people are giving you grief for that. He, if, uh, friends, he is a ha handsome gentleman. That, that is correct. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, all right, let's go with, let me not overthink this. So I'm okay. thinking um, we said measure. I said meter and I was wrong. Um, uh, Usual 21 says, uh, Jazz, it's me, Oscar. Oh, what's good? Yeah, go figure, Oscar. <laughs> I knew it was you. I had a few. <laughs> um, so, all right. I'm going to overthink this. Can I ask for help from the chat? Oh, I can't. Yeah, okay. go to chat. Yeah, Lifeline chat. What do you all uh, give a... I... Well, wait, chat, chat Oh, no, knows. I can't because they, they see your words. They, yeah, right. they that's... see it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you made it difficult. Never mind, chat. I can't, I can't even ask for a Lifeline. <laughs> and my wife is sleeping right now. She's the one who... Oh, no. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go with... Um, he said measure. You measure your hand. You can measure your head, your circumference. Um... I definitely measure my nerves, but uh, I'm just going to go with head. Oh, we're out of time. Oh, wait, what is this? Sudden, you've run out of time tokens, so it's time for a sudden death turn. You have the last chance to find the missing agents. You have an unlimited number of guesses, but no one can give any more clues. Both sides can make guesses any order, but the first wrong guess ends the game, and you all lose. Okay. Okay, so do you get to guess first, I guess? I think it says we can we have both unlimited guesses. So I have options to choose stuff on my side. I, I do too. Right? Yeah. Um, oh, let sorry. me look at your clues. Neanderthal. Oh, oh. Let me look at the Neanderthal one. Uh, head wasn't it? Hand tiger. Uh. Caw. Oh wait, what was the clues that you gave? Neanderthal. Uh, loud. Uh, tune. And liquid. Okay. Um. Psh. Wow. Do you have a? Do you want to get, go for a guess, Jazz, or should I? Uh. I. I don't know. <laughs> um. I'm yeah. still that, that measure. That measure is the one that's throwing me off a little bit. Um. Yeah. Because I know how many clues are on your side, and I know what's on your side. I figured that. Right. Um. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess meter. Okay, so we've got one. Oh! Okay. So, okay. 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 I must find the last clue. It says on my. <sighs> okay. You run out of time. The other side is okay. So I got to think. All right. So you said unclear. So we got one more. Okay. Cool. 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 And we're so close. This is awesome. Yeah, but it's down to me. Like. <laughs> no, that's what, it's even better. It's the pressure's not on me now. <laughs> Can I blame Benita's father if I lose? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We all are. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Benita, so, Benita believes in us. Yes. All right, so um, measure. Oh, we're measure. so close. Yeah, there's two that I'm thinking of, like right off the sun. Okay, okay. Unclear. You so just uh, just as a reminder, folks, uh, the clues that were given that um, Jazz is working on, uh, I gave online one, history two, measure two, caw two, and unclear two. So here we go. So what is measure and unclear? 
<laughs> James says, we believe in you, Jazz and Felicia. <laughs> and I think of measure and unclear. I'm going to go with my gut of this, how I'm feeling right now. I measure uh -huh. that. I measure that a lot. And sometimes I get an unclear feeling on, on that cause my crazy nerves. So I'm going to go with nerve. Oh no. Oh, that was the assassin. Oh, so close. Is it hand? It was memory. Memory. Up. Oh, you know yeah. what? The, uh, I was thinking under, you got uh, the swamp part of it. That was great. Yeah. And then I, I couldn't think of anything else. So I said unclear memory, maybe, but you know oh. what throws me off about this game, which I love so much. Um it's uh because on your on your side, if I remember correctly, you have three assassins, and I have three assassins on my side. Yeah. And on, on my side, memory is one of the assassin words. So sometimes yes. my my eyes push me away from the assassin words completely because I'm also thinking that they're your assassin words as well. Yep. Yeah. No, that that's what's so true about this. Because I think one of my assassin words was um, what was this one? Can I reveal it? No. Oh yeah, you can reveal it. Okay. Uh, one of my assassin words was, oh, what was it? Was it this one, Robin? It was beer. So okay. I guess, yeah, you gave me beer. I was like, oh, that's an assassin. But yeah, I had to rethink that. And yeah, oh, yeah so, so close, man. On my end, when I was thinking tune, you had said sound. So I was thinking of um, bass as one being an, yes. an instrument. You tune your bass. Right. Um, a meter, when you measure, when, you, when, you, when you're measuring. Yes. Um, I got that later on. I, that's the one I yeah. figured out later on. And what was and the then, other one? There was another word that I thought fit in there. Um, tune, you tune your engine. Yes. That's yes. why I said, you know, tune two, but I kind of, that's when I went with, when I, that's was like, oh, I'll just go loud three. Cause, and I, and I was thinking exactly drier, like the chat was talking about with loud. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Okay. I was, cool. thinking, I was thinking of you trying to remember tune. And I was like, like, and when I said Neanderthal, I just went, I went Neanderthal two just because I knew cave was out there. I, uh -huh. I was banking on you remembering drier. And then I know you went you went ahead for to go for head for the next one, but that was that yeah, was yeah. Oh, so close. Good. GG, GG. Uh, yes. Joe says I was impressed. Jazz got the swamp part of unclear. That makes sense. That memory was an assassin. Yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Uh, when you miss <laughs> James is blaming uh, Benita's dad. We're sorry, Benita's dad. No, no oh, harm here. <laughs> uh, Cash uh, Liam says the three assassins are one agent, one instant by center, and the assassin on the other side of the card. Interesting. Nice to uh, know. Yeah, that is good to know. Uh, friends, thank you for joining us. That is, I, I love this game. I, I think this is my favorite version of Code Names for sure. Uh, Michelle and I enjoyed it just as uh, Jazzy, you and your partner enjoyed as well. Yes. Um, I think the online implementation is fantastic. This, this is a great way to play this game. Um, so, Jazz, before we get going here, we're, we're going to wrap it up, folks. I want to thank our guest, Jazz Cruz of the Lobby of Hobbies, for hanging out with us tonight. Before we get going, Jazz, would you like to plug a few projects that you're up to or uh, where people can find you and so forth? Oh, yeah, everybody. Um, thanks for joining in. Again, thanks for all for having me. Um, let me get my uh, my drinks in. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's all take a drink. I'm going to oh. drink some of my naturally essenced uh, LaCroix. So I got my wife this soda stream for Christmas, and this thing's oh. incredible. So I kind of I kind of what they call cheap it out a little bit. So I make this, I make this, I love seltzer. So I can just make the clear seltzer sometimes, but I add like the little Mio drops in it. So I don't buy the official soda stream flavors, but check it out. It, it definitely, a, you know, was worth. <laughs> we need to get you a sponsorship from soda stream, man. <laughs> um, but they'll, they'll, they'll probably cut me because I'm not using their flavors. Oh, well, they don't need to know that. Exactly. So, just our little secret here. But um, so for those of you that are listening, thanks for thanks for joining. Um, again, thanks for all for having me. But you can find me um, everywhere on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, Facebook at Lobby of Hobbies. You'll see it in the description there. Um, we are on um, uh, YouTube. Um, you just search the Lobby of Hobbies. But if you go to um, uh, L I N K T R T R dot E E forward slash lobby of hobbies. I'll drop it in the chat. This will take you to all of our, um, where I have all my content. So you'll find all the links to everything um, that we have right there where we're on social media. You can find, we even have a, a blog that I have um, my buddy judge and a good buddy of mine, Brian, who's a, they're just local friends of mine. Um, I don't have TikTok uh, Pentry games, but um, yeah, I'm an, I'm an old head, but um, 
yeah, if you go, if you go there, that will kind of take you to everything. And I have like, you know, my friends that are just guest writers, um, where if I, if I do get games that I'm reviewing or they're checking out games, I invite them to always write. Um, and I know that's something that I've allowed, you know, I've, I've wanted, um, to have friends that I, you know, to be, be a part of it, to be a part of this community. Um, and I know, uh, I saw uh, Gaming with Sidekicks, my buddy Isaac over there. He offered me that um, opportunity to write my first review, which was an Everdale review on his on his blog post as well. So, you know, that, that was my kind of entryway and segue into getting into content creation. But, you know, for the things that I'm going to be doing um, soon, I'm going to actually be working on a um, review for the 100 Tori, which is an awesome um, tile laying game. Um, so, you know, people that are big fans of um, – Carcassonne, things like that. Check that one out. Um, I just received this one that I'm working. I'm, I actually was working through the rules last night. Dream Runners, um, which is a review copy that I got. I believe um, this week you might be seeing some content from other creators out in the industry talking about this. Probably, if I'm going to give a plug, probably you see it on the board game spotlight somewhere. Um, nice. But but that one I've been I've been looking at. I've got a couple games I that I um been just looking to play. Um, and Ruel, you were talking about Star Wars. Tatooine Tuesday, so I had to, you know, wear my Stormtrooper shirt for you today. Thank but you, brother. I just picked this up this weekend as well, so I'm yes. going to probably be soloing this myself. Uh, my wife does lot, uh, enjoy the Unlock series escape room type games. Um, she's not a big Star Wars buff. Um, to be honest, I was never a Star Wars buff growing up. Um, I got into it with um, the Mandal the Mandalorian. Like, nice. I, friends are like, oh, check the Mandalorian. I was like, oh, let me check this out. And from that, I started watching every star wars I, be, I became a star wars buff within the last year and a half two years and um now, now my daughter you know has got her little baby yoda that's her that was her like, we got our baby dolls but yeah. i got her a little first grogu baby yoda <laughs> <laughs> and that, that thing's in her high chair it's in her stroller it goes with her everywhere she goes i got her Love a little it. shirt so yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm raising a little uh you know, board game and like little geeky nerds so I can have. Well, I, I love it. That's a sign of good parenting folks right there. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to, I want to shout out Benita. Benita, this is for you. She wants uh baby Yoda, baby Yoda, baby Yoda. She has <laughs> uh, the baby Yoda. Like I have the Chewy here, but uh, Benita, this is for you. I've got my baby Yoda ears. Uh, this is knitted for me from, uh, from a cousin of mine. So shout out to you, Benita. Again, I want to thank you jazz so much for your time and for gaming with you, brother. This has been a good time. Um, I will, we will be seeing each other soon, I'm sure, uh, online at least. <laughs> yeah. hey, trust me, I'm out in SoCal. I have friends out in SoCal. Yes, yeah. Um, I, will, I will be out there, and I will be definitely getting in contact with you. So For, it's been for real, fun. man, for real. Okay, uh, so folks, uh, that's going to do it for tonight. Um, I am going to uh, start a raid. Uh, so thank you again for joining me. My name is Ruel Gaviola. This has been Tabletop Tonight, the Talk O Tuesday edition with Jazz Cruz of the Lobby of Hobbies. We want to do a raid, so please stick around. I'm going to shut things down here. We're going to raid. Please join me tomorrow, same time, same channel, 7 p.m. Pacific here. I'm going to play another great board game. And um, until then, stay safe, be kind to each other, and thank you for your time. Have a great night, everybody. Bye now.